All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer and we'll get on with our lesson. God, we uh, come to you this evening just so grateful that you give us opportunities to be together uh, to, to study your word. Just an amazing subject that we're going to be talking about tonight. God, I, I pray just in the powerful name of Jesus that you would help me uh, to get out of the way, that anything that I speak, that it's just not my opinion, it's not what I think, but it, it's your word, your truth. And God, may you just open up all our hearts and our minds to understand that. We, everybody in here knows that the freedom that there is in you. If there's someone in here that does not, lift them up powerfully to you, God. We love you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Everybody said. I thought it was fitting that a verse I used uh, Sunday morning in, in my sermon. It was coming out of uh, Ephesians. I believe I closed with that in my sermon. Ephesians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul w was praying for the church at Ephesus. Don't have this on the screen. And he, he said this. He said, I, I keep asking that the God of our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And that was his part of what he prayed for the church at Ephesus, that, that God would give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So if you read Core 52, as I said, it's the 52nd chapter. This is the last night that we have of it. Pretty big subject that we're, we're dealing with tonight. And boy, I have had so many conversations with people uh, throughout this week uh, about the lesson uh, that we have for tonight. If you didn't read Core 52, uh, what we're talking about, the topic of our lesson is heaven heaven. So uh, the core verse that uh, the author used, he used three verses. I'll start with it there. It's Revelation 21, verse number one. Everybody noticed I said Revelation, right? Not Revelations. If you were here Sunday, one of those services, I made that point. Anyways, here we go. This is John, right? John, and he says this, the apostle John, then I saw, so important, then I saw, look at the language here, and like we can't just read past it, or I'm going to read past it, hopefully come back and address everything. But, but it's one of those things, I, I hope that, that God just opens up our heart to understand the truth in this scripture tonight, and that we just see it afresh. Uh, he says this, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth, look what, had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. Verse 2, watch it again. Give me verse 1 uh, one more time, Todd. First three words, then I saw. Verse number 2, first two words, I saw. Remember the, what, the prayer, give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Like, have you read the book of Revelation? Boy, he had to have some kind of spirit of wisdom and revelation to be able to, to, to understand this or, or to get this vision from God, this revelation from God. He says, then I saw a holy, the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out from heaven. Coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. Verse number three, what happens? And I heard, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be their God. Everybody said amen. amen. Here we go. Verse number one, one more time. Then I saw a new heaven. And a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And there was no longer any sea. Uh, we all know, I would imagine, Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1. What's this say? In the beginning, God created the... Remember, that's very important. I'm going, I'm, I might come back and hit on that. Created the heavens and the earth. The heavens and the singular earth. And, and, and through his creation, you know, six days of creation, on the seventh day he rested. After each day of creation, whatever it was that he created, it was good. Everything that he created, it was good. The only difference that you see is when he created mankind in his image, he looked at mankind and he said, it is very good. Every day it is good, it is good, it is good, it, it is good. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And I, I just got a couple of pictures that I wanted to show you just to be able for, for you all to take in, and you've seen this, but just to remind you to look at the beauty of God's creation. Right, first picture I got up is going to be just uh, white snow-capped mountains. 
Like, look, look, look at the beauty of God's creation and the sunset coming down behind those mountains. Or you think about God's creation, here the next one, the crystal blue sea with the white sandy beaches. And I just love to think about how the waves come in and they stop at just the right part, right? They, they crest, they come in, and then they go back out to the sea. Just the beauty that you see in God's creation give you uh, uh, the, this mountain, uh, picture of a mountain with the fall, full, what's that word, foliage? Yeah, good job. Revelation or revelations? <laughs> Joking. Foolage. <laughs> I should never even try to use words. I never use them in life. Look at the trees, people. <laughs> yeah, turn it really. But you see that. And you think of how beautiful these trees, and we see it so much here in, in East Tennessee. But then those trees also, those, those leaves turn colors, and eventually they turn brown, and, and they fall off, and, and they die. But, but God's creation, watch, watch it one more time. Now, now in the spring, give me that next picture, look, come back alive. To take in God's creation... The beauty that we see on, on earth. I want you to listen how the Apostle Paul speaks about th just this creation, God's creation. It's Romans 8, it's verse number 22. We know that the whole creation has been... Well, that sounds a lot different than the way I'm describing it to you, right? Look at it. I thought throw up those pictures. Beauty. Oh, white snow-capped mountains, sun setting behind it. White sandy beaches. Crystal blue sea, fall leaves, spring, beauty, God's creation. We know that the whole creation has what? Has been groaning as in pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Groaning pain, <laughs> creation. What in the world does he mean? Have you ever thought about this? Like, like those wonderful pictures that, that I showed you. What we see now. Those beautiful pictures that, that I showed you and we can take in the beauty uh, of God's creation. Everybody in here grasps this. What we see now is not the creation from the beginning. Not the creation from Genesis 1 and Genesis chapter 2. No, what we see is creation after corruption of Genesis chapter 3. Those beautiful pictures, that's not Genesis 1-2. That's, that, that would be after the, the fall of man. It's after corruption in Genesis chapter 3. A great theologian, <laughs> Augustine or Augustine, two different ways you can pronounce it. Somebody correct me afterwards if I'm wrong. I gave you both. I guess I can't be wrong. <laughs> Listen to what he says. Think of those pictures I showed you. If these are the beauties afforded to the sinful man... What does God, it's so good. If these are the beauties afforded to the sinful man, what does God have in store for those who love him? Oh. I was one of those you just want to take the time to pray and God just give us a spirit where we're all longing for that. What does God have prepared for those who love him? And the next time that you take in the beauty of God's creation and, and you just have this thought of like, oh, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I want you to change that thought to that is beautiful, but not as beautiful as it will be. But not as beautiful as it will be. See, and, and back to what Paul was saying there in that Romans 8.22, creation is, is groaning as in pains of, of childbirth. See, for all those beautiful pictures that I could show you, I didn't put them up there because I don't want don't to do that. But, it, of course, they're out there. I could show you. I could throw a picture up there right now. I've uh, been there, witnessed it firsthand of children digging through trash to try to find food. Right, I put up uh, pictures of battered women suffering through domestic violence, creation, groaning, disease, death, creation, groaning, creation, and pain. And see, this, what I'm giving to you right here, this is why we should look forward to Revelation 21 
Verse number one. Then I saw a what? A new heaven and a new earth. And the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. Before we get any farther and I dive into this subject that is heaven, let me, let me state this. I don't know exactly what, what you've heard about heaven. I don't know what you've been taught about heaven or, or maybe I should say it this way. I don't know what anybody in here right now, uh, what, what you think heaven will be like. And see, for myself, I just have a really hard time standing up here, in, in right here behind this lectern, in front of everyone, standing here and teaching you what I think. It's just tough for me to do. I'm very transparent, very try to try to be a truthful person. I have a hard time of just saying, "Well, I, I think this is this is what this means." And that's why I had like a really difficult time putting this lesson together because most of the time when I stand up here and I teach and I've prepared a lesson and I've studied the scripture, it's like what I am teaching, there's just this spirit I feel like that God puts in me of like I'm certain, I'm confident, this is your word, this is what it means, I'm explaining it to the people. I I was talking with a a gentleman uh, this afternoon younger guy, he's probably 14 or 15 years old, and, and I was just talking about the things I've been through in my life and uh, how God has, has just completely restored my life. And I'm, I'm a different person than I used to be. Like when I was talking to him, you know, I mean, I, I, just, I, I just believe everything I'm saying. Like I, I knew it. I, I know what God has done. When it comes to this, for this lesson, and I'm like, okay, God, you want me to stand up here, take this scripture from Revelation, from John, that he, have you read the book of Revelation? You want me to stand up here and, and, and teach that for this lesson? I, I'll just tell you straight up, I never found peace. I was like, I'm going to give you this scripture, and I'm going to tell you this is exactly what it means, and this is exactly what's going to happen, and this is what heaven will be like. I never had peace until I kept reading in Revelation. Right? I kept reading in Revelation, and then in this moment, Revelation 22, verse number 3, this gave me peace. This is what heaven will be like. No longer will there be any curse. What's he talking about there? Since the fall of man, right? That's, that's when the curse entered. No longer will there be any curse. Can you imagine this? The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city. And his servants, that would be us, right? I hope, <laughs> His servants will serve him. Watch this, verse number four. Never had peace, never had peace. Bam, word of God, verse number four. They will see his face. Yeah, amen. Like you want me to describe what? I don't know. What's that going to look like? What's he going to look like? Right, I, I feel like, boy, God just keeps hitting me hard on that. I, I know I've explained it to you a hundred times, that scripture in Isaiah about. Uh, Isaiah said, I saw the Lord. He was seated on his throne. The train of the robe filled the temple. And there was the, the angels that were flying over top of them. They had six wings. Two wings covered their feet. Two wings kept them afloat. Two wings covered their face because they could not look upon God because he is that holy. When we get to heaven, we will what? See his face. Yes, there's nothing in here that gives me any kind of peace as I'm going to say, well, here's what God's going to look like. John goes on to describe him. Goes on probably backwards a little bit, I should say, but it's like I just have a hard time being able to do that, to take that. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be, watch this, verse number five, no more not, meaning there is no darkness. (laughs) Check this out. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of a sun. For the Lord God will give them light. And, <laughs> and they will reign forever and ever. There's a million gospel songs going through my head right now I want to sing. <laughs> I was talking to him about it back there uh, a second ago. But when it comes down to exactly what it looks like now, what it will look like in the end, right? Because well, I'll get into that here in just a minute. New heaven, new earth, 
And for me to try to stand here and describe that to anybody, really tough. It was really tough to do. Earlier, I was quoting either Augustine or Augustine. That's the same person, however you pronounce his name. But what that should tell you, if I'm quoting him, that I was studying. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Now, of course, I'm always going to be in the Word of God, but, but like, uh, as I was putting this lesson together, I was looking at a lot of different commentaries. I was looking into books of what different people had to say. Uh, did you read the lesson from Core 52, what this guy had to say? Here's what I learned. You ready? Everyone thinks something different. And I don't know on this one right here. I'm not bold enough to, I will, I will not say to you, I think. Like, I don't want to get up here and say that. I don't. I want to teach that way. But everyone thinks something different. And, and no offense, if, if we're having a conversation about anything from the Word of God and, and what it means in the Word of God, the true Word of God, and that conversation starts with, well, I think, let me tell you this, I'm out. I'm out. No offense to anyone, promise you. Don't take offense to what I'm saying. I'll back it up with some scripture here in just a second about of what I'm talking about. But if it starts with I think, then I'm out. I'll show you what I mean, 1 Corinthians 2, verse number 9. However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no, everybody say those two words, <laughs> what I think, done. I should continue on with the scripture, but you're probably reading it, right? What no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, what no human mind has conceived. No, you haven't. Here it comes, next part of it. The things that God has prepared for those who love him. It can't be, I think it means this. Well, I think it could mean this. Well, it might be this. That's your human mind. And the scripture right here tells me that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no human mind has conceived the things that God has prepared for those who love. And it's like, all right, Ben, then what are we? We're stuck? No, praise God. There's verse number 10. These are the things God has revealed to us by his, everybody, capital S. These are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. This subject, heaven, is a deep thing of God. And, and see, I, I really, uh, I was looking at this earlier, like I said, study Revelation 1 through 22. And don't come back to like, well, this guy said this, and this guy said this, and I think this guy, and I think this guy presence of God, spirit of God, reading the word of God, that he will give you what it means. That's what we need. That's what we need. Watch this. This is what I'm talking about. Revelation chapter 1, verse number 9. Think about uh, 1 through 8 being sort of the meet and greet, and then he talks about the seven churches somewhat that he's writing to. But watch this. This is so important, so important. I, John, your brother and companion, and this is the first chapter of Revelation, right? We're way at the end, our core verse is 21, there's 22 chapters. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that, that are ours in Jesus was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was exiled because I was following Christ, is what he's saying. Watch this, verse number 10. This. To the comma. On the Lord's day, I was in the what? Back, you don't have to go there, but what 1 Corinthians 2 said, what, what, no, uh, what no ear has heard, what no eye has seen, what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. These things are revealed to us by his Right, And then John's going to get this by the Spirit, and God's going to tell him, take out a, a, a scroll and start writing. It's like, here's what I got. This is me saying to you today in this moment when I study this, I can't give you like a confident, here's what it is. But on the Lord's day, I was in the Spirit, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. Why well, I was talking about that prayer so much of, give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation. 
On the Lord's day, I was in the Spirit. And what happened? I heard behind me a loud voice, a trumpet. Verse 11, which said, here it comes. This would have been written in red, Jesus speaking. So good. Right on the scroll, what you see. And send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna. Anybody? <laughs> yeah. And you want to act like you can understand Revelation. Come on. No, I'm playing. <laughs> but we can. We can't. Spirit of God in us. Spirit of God in us. And, I, and I'm telling you, like it, I, I think this is a great takeaway for tonight. This is a great takeaway for everybody in this room. When you're talking to somebody about the Scripture, do not use the word, I think. Right, Jesus said this, John chapter 3, he said, we testify uh, about what we have seen. We speak what we know. He says, right on a scroll, what you see, and send it to the seven churches, the Ephesus, Smyrna. I'll stand up here and butcher it since you guys don't want to. <laughs> Pergamum. Thyatira, go ahead. Yeah. Sardi. Sardi. You don't pronounce the S, I'm pretty sure. Phil, uh, thank you, Phil Doe. Come on, I knew that one, come on. <laughs> Break the monotony just a little bit. <laughs> Lady, I see you. Look at this, verse number 12. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And bam, now he gets in to Revelation. Here it comes. What would happen if we all just came in here Sunday on the Lord's Day, we'll call and say, we were in the Spirit? Right, it should probably just be a lesson of let's spend time uh, studying, learning, asking God, help us to be in the Spirit. What keeps us from being in the Spirit? We want to be in the Spirit. But then, like I said, so here. Here is, here is John in the Spirit, hearing from God, seeing the, these visions and getting this revelation. And there's no way I can stand up here and I can say, I think this is what he's talking about. I just can't do it. And, and, and I want to really drive this point home, what I'm doing here. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, this is verse number 1. This is the Apostle Paul. He's writing to the church at Corinth. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 1. It'll make a lot of sense when I get down to it. He says, if I must go on boasting, although there is nothing to be gained, I will go on to, look at this, visions and revelations from the Lord. Verse number 2, Look, watch his language. I know a man in Christ. I know a man in Christ, just trust me, I'm not going to use all the scripture down in verse number 7. He's basically speaking in third person right now. Here, he's talking about himself. When he says, I know a man in Christ, trust me, I'm not getting to it, but he's talking about himself. I know a man in Christ, now watch this, who 14 years ago was caught up to the, remember this, third heaven. Whether it was in body or out of body, I don't know, God knows. <laughs> right? Like, this is Paul writing the Bible, and he's, as I said, he's talking about himself. He said he was called up to the third heaven, and, and I don't even know if I was in body or out of body. Verse number three, and I know that this man, whether in body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows. This is, this is what really I wanted to hit, verse number four. Was called up to paradise and heard, can everybody say that word? So you went to the third heaven. Uh, evidently, the third heaven has a lot to do with paradise because you was called up to paradise. Give me uh, verse 1 again, one more time, bottom part of it probably. Who 14 years ago was called up to the third heaven. Now give me verse number 4. Was called up to paradise, and I heard inexpressible things that no one is permitted to tell. Second Corinthians chapter 12, Paul's saying, I saw it, I heard it, I can't even begin to describe it to you, inexpressible. So cool, John gets a revelation and guess what, 
He's permitted to tell. But Paul is saying inexpressible. And like, do you see the huge deal now with it in, in, in studying uh, of, of the scripture and not really going with, well, I, I think this is what it means. But like the greatest thing any of us could do in this moment be like, let's all get down on our knees. Pray to God Almighty. Like, we need help and understand. Because God wants us to know. And what is this? Through his spirit. Through the spirit of God. He will give us understanding. Through the spirit, he will give us wisdom and, and revelation. But check it out. Keep on going. One thing that people ask a lot, uh, what, what people want to know is what will our heavenly bodies be like? I've heard that one a lot. What will our heaven, heavenly bodies be like? Philippians 3, verse number 20. But our, This is Paul writing to uh, the church at Philippi. But our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, 21, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, look at it, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his what? Glorious body. What kind of body are you going to have? It's going to be a glorious body. Right, it's going to be like Christ. I like to think, nope, back it up. Yeah, see what I'm saying? <laughs> Mark chapter 9 is where I was going. But remember, we just went over that a little uh, while ago, uh, the transfiguration. Remember, in, uh, Jesus took Peter, James, and John up on the mountain. They saw Moses, and they saw Elijah. And, and then Jesus was transfigured before him, and the scripture said that his clothes became exceedingly white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. I, I was teaching it like Jesus was glowing. Here's me. I don't know. Maybe that's what the glorious body looks like. So what will the glorious body be like? Here, I'll let John, the same guy's writing Revelation, I'll let him tell you First John chapter 3, verse number 2. Dear friends, now we are children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known. What we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, what? We shall be like him. For we will see him as he is. I'm going to continue on because I will teach you some stuff that I, I feel uh, really strongly about. In Revelation 21. Here we go, verse number 1. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And there was no longer any sea. And, and see, this, a study of the scripture and, and people, who, the churches that John is writing this to and what he's seeing, this should not catch us by surprise. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but when you read that, if you read Core 52 today, did that catch you by surprise? Of like, what he's getting ready to teach? There's a new heaven? There's, heaven's coming down? Like I said, I'm not asking you to raise your hand. But, but this... Scripture would not have caught them by a surprise. Look at that one more time. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. Isaiah 65, verse number 17. Seems like I've been in Isaiah a lot, so you've heard me say multiple times, 700 years before Christ. See, I will recreate, what? New heavens. I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered nor will they come to mind. Psalms 102, verse number 25. In the beginning you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Verse number 26, watch it. They will perish. Confident of this, you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment, like clothing, and you will change them, and they will be discarded. But you remain the same. And your eye, and I'm sorry, your years will never end. 28. I like this right here. The children of your servants will live in your, everybody say that word. Their descendants will be established before you. All right, this is really important. I'm going to try to slow down on it to make sure everybody grasps this because this would be probably the most important teaching point of the night and to help you in the study of the Scripture. Presence is so important in what we're talking about. The word heaven in the Scripture can be used to describe three different things. 
The word heaven in the scripture can be used to describe three different things. If you think about it, the one we just read uh, in Psalms. Give me that verse number 25 one more time, if you would, Todd, in 102. In the beginning, you laid the foundations of the earth and the, everybody say that word. Right, so you see that, that, the heavens. So in that scripture, he's not talking about heaven. Like, of what, what, I guess how our minds often hear heaven. And I don't know. Maybe I'm just trying to think what your mind thinks. That's how my mind goes. Somebody tell me to stop trying to think what your mind's thinking. <laughs> but you, you see what I'm saying? It's like, in the beginning, you laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens. And the heavens. It's not talking about presence of God. In the scripture, the word heaven can be used to describe three different things. The first one we're going to look at is the word heaven can be used to describe the sky. The word heaven can be used to describe the, the sky. Think of that, of kind of like the blue sky that you see. The earth's atmosphere can be used, uh, scripture will use that word as the heavens. I got you some scripture to back it up. Acts 14, verse number 17. This is the apostle Paul, and he's preaching to a crowd. He says, yet he has not left himself without testimony. He has shown kindness by giving you rain from where? Now see what I'm saying, where is he talking about? Is he talking about like where you go and spend eternity with them? No, he's talking about the sky. The rain comes from, where does the rain come from? Heaven, sky, cloud, any one of those would have worked. <laughs> All right, so, so that's one way that heaven can be used to describe the earth's atmosphere. Another place in the scripture, it could be used to kind of like describe, we'd say, the cosmos or, or outer space. I'll give you Psalms 8, verse number 3, goes like this. When I consider your everybody... Right? Heavens. Now watch, it's different than what I was talking about with the rain coming down and what we're thinking about with blue skies or, or whatnot, the earth's atmosphere. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, look at it. The what? The moon. The stars. Right? So when they're writing the word heavens or heaven, the, the, there's different ways that they are using that. This one is used for the cosmos. Uh, the other one and the really big one, this is the most important one, Right? The word heaven, we got one and two, atmosphere, blue skies, we'll say. Uh, number two, cosmos, outer space, we'll say. Uh, number three is this, and the most important one, heaven is this. This is heaven, God's presence. To be in God's presence. That is heaven, to be in God's presence presence. It was 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I read it to you earlier, verse number 2. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was called up to the what? What do you think he's talking about? Right, I just gave you, there's three times, three different ways it can be used in the scripture. It can be used for the atmosphere, it can be used for the cosmos, or it can be used to be in the presence of God. Well, I'll tell you this, he said, I, got, I saw unexpressible things. I would imagine on this one, See, I would imagine is a lot different than I think. Just see how you change that. <laughs> I'm telling you, though, I have so much trust in God, though. I really do because that just, like, when, as soon as I said that, I was like, yep, not supposed to say that. <laughs> not supposed to give him what you imagine. Not supposed to give him what you think. Supposed to give him the truth of the scripture. But that makes so much sense to me now when he says I was caught up to the third Heaven. So, so important when we're looking at this that when you're reading the scripture, you, you have the three different ways that you can look at how uh, the authors of the Bible would have used the word heaven. Revelation 2, verse number 1. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth have what? Have passed away and there were no longer any sea. I've been wanting to drive that point home all day, uh, all night. That word uh, where it's talking about there's no longer any sea, the people would have saw the sea as evil or the people would have saw the sea as like causing division. So what he's teaching here is, is that there's no division in heaven. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth where the first earth, heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. How's that going to happen? It says it's going to pass away. We know that God will not destroy the earth again by flood. So what do you think? How is this going to happen? How is it all going to shake out at the end? In this new heaven. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 10. But the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord is talking about when he comes back, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens, the heavens 
will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. The earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Now you think about what we're talking about there in that Revelation 21. Why is there going to be a new heaven? Why is there going to be a new earth? Because when Jesus comes back, what does it say? Everything is going to be destroyed by fire. You know what Peter goes on to say? It's the next verse, and I don't think I have it up there. The very next verse, he says, Since that is the case, what kind of people ought you to be? This is what's happening. Right, so this is me saying boldly and like this is what I believe strongly will happen. Jesus will come back one day. Everything's going to be destroyed by fire. Jesus said it himself. Uh, I don't have it on screen. He said heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never fa fail. You could go 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the apostle Paul writing to the church at Corinth. He said, I laid a foundation. Now someone else is building on it. And when he starts talking about how you're building on this foundation, he says some people build with gold. Some people build with silver. Some people build with costly stones. And he starts up here with like gold is the best, and it just continues to dwindle down. But then at the, uh, towards the end of 1 Corinthians 3, he says, each person's work will be tried by fire when Jesus comes back. 21 verse number 2. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem. Here it is again. Coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. Revelation 21 3. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them, and they will be, and he will be their God. All right, so here's the other question that we get oftentimes. Maybe you're thinking of this or not. So, what about the people who have died? The person, the, the born-again child of God that passed away today, where, where are they at? Second Corinthians 5, verse number 8, check it out. We are confident, yes, Paul to the church at Corinth, yes, well pleased, rather, to be absent from the body is to be what? What am I telling you to be present with the Lord? Where is that location? Heaven. Where are the people who have, the born again children of God who have passed away now? They are in heaven. What is heaven? To be in the presence of God. And here's the teaching on it. This is what I do feel confident in uh, of what I study today and what I believe the Spirit of God gave me today is through this. Where are the people of God at right now? They are in heaven. When Jesus comes back, there will be a new heaven. If we do not die before Jesus comes back, we will never experience present heaven. Looking at everybody, <laughs> see, if, see if you're taking it in. Right, if I pass away right now, if, if I die right now, the, because of the blood of Jesus Christ, I will spend an eternity with God. I will go to, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I will be in his presence. That's heaven. That's heaven. One day when Jesus comes back, look what the scripture, no, I have to look at it. I've read it a hundred times. I hope you know it by now. There will be a new heaven. There will be a new earth. And look at what he's saying. I can go over it one more time. Y'all are looking at me like you're confused. I want you to see it. Verse number two. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem. Give me, uh, you don't have that up there, do you? <laughs> right? Look at it. One. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first earth, heaven and the first earth had passed away. Right? I can't take anything other than what that scripture says. That's what I see it to say. How has it passed away? It's going by fire. Give me verse, there it is, you got it. Now verse number two. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband, verse number three. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people. He will dwell with them. All right, everybody really confused? I really didn't want to confuse you with any of it. Uh, I did want to stand up here to be very transparent. And I guess also to warn you, don't follow every kind of teaching that you hear. 
and take everything that's just the, the gospel truth. As I said, I mean, I read a bunch of theologians today. Somebody's, I don't know if any of them are right. Maybe somebody in there is. But there's a lot of different opinions on it. And it can't mean a lot of different things. So what I want to close with, I'll just show you something really cool. Um, Solomon is the one who, who built the temple for God. In the temple that he was building for God, there was this place known as the, of the Holy of Holies. That was to be known of where the presence of God would be at, in the Holies of Holies. So this is what uh, the scripture says, uh, how he built that. First Kings 6, verse number 19. He prepared the inner sanctuary with the temple to set the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord there. That's where they believed the presence of God was. Now watch what it looked like, verse number 20. The inner sanctuary was 20 cubits long, 20 cubits wide, and 20 cubits high. Uh, so when you hear that cubit, they would say it's from your elbow to your middle finger. This was the measurement. That's 18 inches. 20 cubits, roughly 30 feet. What I want you to see, though, the dimensions of what's so good. The dimensions of what Solomon built for the presence of God was like this perfect cube. Right? It was 15 cubits long, 15 cubits wide, 15 cubits high. Everybody see that, right? Now watch this. The new Jerusalem that is coming down from heaven. This is Revelation 21, verse number 16. Check it out. The city was laid out like a square. As long as it is wide. He measured the city with the rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia in length. And as wide and high as it is long. So what this new city, Jerusalem, that is coming down, what am I continually trying to teach you or drive home this point towards the end of the lesson? Heaven is where God's presence is. Where this new Jerusalem is coming down, it's going to be a perfect cube as well. When you hear stadia, a stadia is 360 feet, 12,000 stadia, check this out, 14,000 miles long. Yeah, wow would be what we'd say, right? Look, but it's so cool. Think of this, Old Testament stuff. Solomon's building the temple, making a place for the holies of holies. It's going to be 30 feet, 30 feet, 30 feet, however that went, right? Long, wide, high. New Jerusalem's coming down. Perfect cube, Solomon, temple, holy of holies, presence of God. New Jerusalem is coming down. Heaven is coming down. What's heaven? Presence of God. And what's it going to be like? The city, what is it going to be like? Uh, 1,400 miles that way, 1,400 miles that way, and 1,400 miles up. I want to be in there. Hope to see you there one day. Maybe you'll smile. <laughs> I probably wouldn't smile after that lesson either. I really didn't want to. I really didn't want to confuse anybody with it. But also, uh, speaking to Todd back there before I, I got up here to speak, I, I'm not going to try to teach you something I'm not 100 percent on, and I'm never going to give you. I think if, if I ever give you, I think then you'd be like, I don't want, I don't want to know what you think, man. I used to do drugs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It's easy for me. Like I would never go with what I think. <laughs> you guys haven't made, or never mind, I'll shut up. Um, I'm going to pray here to dismiss anybody that uh, wants to go ahead and leave. There might be some other people that come in here and we'll pray for Lex Ann. Uh, as always, uh, I, I really do not want, did not want to confuse anyone. You got anything you want to talk to me about, or uh, you can uh, tell me something that you understand through this scripture. Would love to hear from you. Uh, enjoyed that, doing that as much as anything. So uh, let's pray. We'll be dismissed. God, thank you for uh, your word, the truth that's in your word. I pray for all the people in here tonight, anyone who is watching online, that you give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation and that when we read your word, that it, it pierces our heart in such a way that like, we know your truth. We know what, what this means. We know what it stands for. And, and we know how to teach that to other people in a way that you will help them to receive. That's what our trust is in, God. Help us to always follow uh, people that are truthfully teaching your word, for your word is truth, not opinions or not what people think, but through your spirit, God, just like we read in the scripture, so evident. John, God is revelation through the spirit. Help us to get our understanding through the spirit. It's in Jesus' name I pray, everybody said. 
All right, we'll let some people trickle in.